everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Diane and in my studio we make videos showing you in detail and real time how to paint beautiful loose watercolours. We release at least one video almost every day so if you want to learn to paint for relaxation please consider subscribing if you haven't already so that you keep up to date and don't miss any of my fabulous content. Hit like and subscribe and don't forget the bell for notifications. Today we're going to do a warm-up of some relaxed roses in the studio. It's snowing outside and who wants to paint snow? So let's get started. I'm working on a piece of hot press paper here and I've decided to go with a palette of alizarin crimson, naples yellow, which combined together make quite a nice soft apricot-y kind of colour. And I'm using a large-ish round brush. This one is a size 11, uh, round synthetic with a reasonably good point on it. Um, and I'm using a modified C stroke to paint these roses. If you look on YouTube you will find dozens and dozens of tutorials teaching people how to paint the stylized rose using the C stroke, uh, three strokes of C and all sorts of things like that. Well, this is a modified version of that. And if you watch what I do, you'll see that we go a little bit further than just drawing lots of C shapes. Coming in with more colors and more variations so that you can um, actually paint something which looks more like a rose. But this is just a warm up. As you can see, I'm working quite quickly. I'm not agonizing over this, I'm just enjoying putting down the paint, mixing it up, different combinations of Naples yellow and uh, alizarin crimson to give different shades of pinkish, um, pinkish uh, peach or whatever you want to call it, apricot, peach, sounds like a fruit salad. Um, and what I'm doing to make this design is uh, doing different sizes and different orientations of the roses. So some of them are facing this way, some of them facing that way. Some of them are more like buds, some of them are completely open. And placing them, scattering them in a random kind of way so that we have the impression of a, of a bouquet of roses or a, a beautiful bush in full flower. Something I can't say I've ever managed to achieve myself in my garden, but you never know. There's always a chance. So let's just carry on here now, putting in a few more roses in the same way. see that I'm overlapping some of the blooms to give a more natural effect. Uh, I feel like I'm painting my duvet cover actually as I'm doing this. It makes me think of a lovely floral fabric that you would be happy to have as a curtain or yeah I know I'm rambling. Um, so yes make them overlap so they look more natural. This one is more lilac. You can change the tone a little bit to give a bit more variety. I'm putting in some slightly lilac-y coloured leaves here and in a moment I'm going to start putting in some stems and I'm using a very soft green just giving the roses something to attach to so they can be more natural. And then of course once we've got the stems in we'll start putting in some, some leaves some green ones. Still using the same brush, no need to fuss about the size of brush. And uh, rose petal, rose leaves are a kind of oval shape. I'm not going to bother about trying to make them realistic, just putting them where the gaps are to fill in the gaps to make this whole thing look pretty. Every 
every time my brush goes off camera I'm picking up a slightly different shade of green. I'm not just dipping into one uh, mixture but always varying the colour just slightly. And now I've got a slightly darker green and I'm going to go over some of the uh, pet, uh, the leaves that I've already done just to give them a, a shadow side. A light side and a shadow side is always a good thing. This is a very relaxing thing to do before you start the proper painting in the day. Just spend a few minutes playing. This is a page from my sketchbook. You can see from the two holes on the left hand side there. Uh, you may remember that I made a very, very simple sketchbook by punching two holes and stringing them together with a piece of cord. The great thing about that is because it's not a bound book, you can slip the page out, paint it flat on the, on the table, and then you can pop it back in again if you want to keep it safe. And I'm using my Zirkel Button paper today again, which is a lovely, really beautiful, soft surface with no texture at all. It's just like painting on satin or silk. And the strange thing is, although it's quite thin, I don't think it's more than 90 pound, it doesn't cockle. Absolutely amazing. I'm astonished by this paper. If anyone wants to know what it's called, I'll put the name in the description below. comes from Germany. I'm not sure where it's available. I haven't uh, researched it yet, but I will be doing that. And don't forget to go to the community tab, by the way, and uh, keep up to date there with um, the communications and conversations that will be going on. We've just got the community uh, facility now that we've got more than a thousand subscribers and I'm going to be putting things up there like polls, asking people what they would like to see me doing and uh, you can ask questions if you want to and I will do my best to answer them as well as I possibly can. Just putting in some uh, some darks now to just give a little bit more sh shape to the to the roses and to bring them out a little bit. I'm using a combination there of green and violet, I think. I'll put a list of the colours that I used in the description below. But basically, I think I only used five colours in this painting. The little touches at the end tend to bring it to life, if anything will. These little paintings make lovely accent points in your decor, lovely to frame up. You'd be surprised actually how wonderful something like this can look if you frame it well. So I do recommend you have a go. Nothing to lose. Um, and if by any remote chance you want to purchase one of my paintings, we have them for sale on Etsy and on eBay and on my website where you'll find prints of everything that I've painted on my channel. Limited edition prints, so they are very high quality and you can barely tell them apart from the original. Well, there we are, coming to the end of that. I've enjoyed my warm-up. I hope you enjoyed watching me. Uh, if you did, please give me a like and subscribe to the channel. We're still 
looking for more subscribers, as many as we possibly can get. I think we have about 1,200 now, so we are coming along. Um, please, yes, uh, and click the bell. Don't forget to click the bell to be notified when there's a new video coming out. So I'm off to have lunch now, and uh, it's going to be pasta today because I've been in the studio far too long this morning. Out into the snow we go, and it's uh, goodbye from me, goodbye from the dogs, and goodbye from Tamsin. And I will see you again here soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.